Patrick, I love this film franchise. The first one, we watched uh, both films last night and it's just so much fun. I really, really enjoyed this, uh, this second iter iteration of The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. I think it's so much fun. Can you tell me though, uh, when this story first starts off, what's the mental state that Michael Bryce is in when we start the film? Well, the idea for the sequel came when I was I was editing um, the Hitman's Bodyguard and I was, you know, like, and the editing process sort of goes for like six months and often eight months. So you sit with that longer than you actually sitting with these characters when you're filming production sort of goes for six months. But um, I was just watching Michael Bryce and, and Ryan's journey through the first film and I just couldn't help but wonder what what's happened to him after this? And it seemed to me quite obvious. I was like, this guy would be in therapy. I mean, I would. I would be in therapy with PTSD. And that's exactly where we open the hitman's wife's bodyguard and we find him, is that he's trying to, you know, um, shed away the emotional strain of being on a road trip with Sam Jackson in the first film. So, uh, you know, this is, and that's where the idea kicked off for the sequel. Now, Selma Hayek's character in, in the first film was uh, loved by like many fans. I, I love that character. As soon as she stole every scene she was in. So when you knew that you were going to add her to this mix and make it a trio, what kind of excited you about, about this trio? Well, what, what the thing that came out of the first film was like, to me, it felt like Sam Jackson, who's playing Darius Kincaid. He's sort of like this disapproving father figure. Right. And then you've got Ryan Reynolds playing Michael Bryce, who's like this suffering fool that you know, he's, he's just in dire need of validation because he's looking for the outside world to heal the empty internal world because he's a man child. Right. Um, and then that sort of dynamic alone, like I felt like this father son sort of um, dynamic to me, that's sort of where the comedy really zinged and in, in, in terms of their relationship. So then to bring Selma Hayek into the fray, you know, like having the three of them, to me, it felt like it completed the family unit. And it's certainly the thematic that's, that's, that's played throughout the film. Um, but she's like the crazy mother, you know? So you've got the crazy mother, the disapproving father and the, the screaming child in between them, Ryan Reynolds. Now, the, the, the first film is loaded with action. I mean, honestly, some of the action in that first film, it, it, it rivals like any action movie that's really out there, even though it's an action comedy. But the second movie not only has killer action, but the comedy's taken up to, to the next level too. Yeah. But I want to talk about one, some of those action sequences, especially that one in the club. Can you talk to me about shooting that and, uh, and talk about uh, some of the most challenging sequences you had in this film? Yeah, so, we, we, so there's a lot of work goes into action sequences and it's all in the prep because, right. you know, like there's so much safety and the, the dynamics, there's so many different elements involved. So all the prep we did, we were doing all the prep in London. We were pre-visiting, we pre vis the fight sequences. So like the, like the nightclub shootout sequence that happens in the film, um, you know, we build a, 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 a version of that nightclub out of boxes on, on a soundstage. Oh, wow. We, we just use cardboard boxes. So it's got the exact measurements. And then I'm, I'm allowed, I get to walk through. So while I'm off prepping the film, most afternoons I'll stop by and then I'll walk through and start working out my shots as I'm following the stunt doubles that are choreographing it. And then that's where you really get to sort of pick right. and choose and change. You're like, oh, well, actually it'd be better if he flips over the table this side because that'll allow me to bring the camera around here. So it's a really sort of organic ongoing process that evolves throughout pre-production. And then once you get there on stage and you've got all the actors and, and all the crew and, you know, all the chaos that then you know exactly what you're doing because Absolutely. you don't have time to work that out when you're shooting. I can only imagine, right? Now, uh, Selma Hayek is hilarious in this film. And you know what? Like I said earlier, the, the comedy is really upped in this film. Like, yeah. it is so funny it, it just seeing these guys just rip. Like, everything you imagine them to be, it, it's exactly there on camera. So the question I have is... Uh, was a lot of that stuff organic? Like, I mean, not organic, but how much of that was on the page and how much of that was them just ripping? Yeah, look, we, there's a, obviously we have, we have the script and we have, we have all the, um, the arcs mapped out and we, you know, we've got it all written down. And then, but then I feel like, you know, especially with these actors and the caliber of them, they're all so talented and they bring so much to the table that, you know, you'd be a fool not to take everyone's ideas on board. And, and, and certainly, you know, like there's a, you know ryan's heavily involved in in the you know when we're working on the script and so i'm constantly texting him ideas he's texting ideas back and you know everyone's and then we get there on the day and we'll shoot a scene and and you know there's there's a i feel like as a director i've got the sandbox there for the actors and then you know 
you just let them let them go because I am really open to to improv and sometimes I'll think of something and shout it out and then they'll involve that or sometimes Salma would have a crazy idea and and then I think wait actually we can expand on that you run in and you say hey let's just back it up do that line again and then Ryan's like yeah because I could do this on top of that and then sometimes like there's a specific scene in a car where there's the three of them are all arguing that <laughs> that that just lit up and it, and it went and, and it sort of crossed the line at one point because especially Sam and Ryan right. are really good at abusing each other on the fly. Like, it is. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, are they actually arguing? What are we still filming? What's going on? <laughs> that was really great. It's a lot of fun. I love it. That's so much fun. See, it looks like it's just so much fun to, just to be on that set and just watching them do their thing, right? Yeah. Um, now, can you talk to me about the dynamic between Michael and Sonia opposed to the dynamic between Michael and Darius? Yeah, so Salma's plays Sonia Kincaid, and Sonia Kincaid is is clinically crazy, like right? She's just batshit crazy, right? And but she wears her essence, right? She lives in her essence because there's there's literally no filter when she speaks, right? So what she says is actually kind of the, weirdly the truth. That's so right? funny because my girlfriend said the exact same thing when we were watching this. She was like, wow, she has no filter and it's so much- No filter. I Whereas love- Ryan's character has, it's all filter. He's wearing a mask. He's, he's trying to look for validation from the external world and it's pre- what he's presenting to right. the external world. So when you sort of break it down like that, that to me, that's, that's sort of like the comedy goal because right. even though she is a convicted killer, I'd much rather hang out with Sonia Kincaid than Michael Bryce. Oh yeah, because Michael Bryce is 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 douchey, man. It's like, dude, get get your, get your act together. So it kind of felt like they had a really, you know, because she's got such a strong potty mouth, um, and we felt like that in the first one. We were like, listen, if Darius Kincaid is going to be married to a woman because she was stuck in prison in the first one, and this is what I, you know, when I met with Salma to, to get her on board for the first film, I was like, it's like she's got to be an extreme version of Kincaid. Cause that's what he would love. He'd love Absolutely. a really healthy, strong woman. That's full of passion. Um, but I really think that the comedy dynamic works with, with Salma and Ryan because she, she, she's in, she, there's just so much denial. Right. Uh, and there's a lot of fun to be had in that denial. Absolutely. She's denying the truth of her, her age, where she's at in her life. And, and she only sort of hears what she wants to hear. So Ryan's sort of speaking the, words of the audience you know so there's a lot of funny funny scenes that come out of that i also love always seeing uh uh, darius and and um and his wife in in the bar in honduras when things go down it's always so much fun to see them in that um now look you also have the amazing antonio banderas in the film playing the role of aristotle what did he bring to that role that wasn't on the page oh he's got he's full of class swagger and sophistication you know He's, he's so charming and he's actually genuinely funny. He's hilarious. Like my, my abs hurt when I hang around with him because you're just laughing too much. He's a, he's a true performer and a really, um, he's, I, I, I just love like when, when he speaks, you just close your eyes and you're like, Oh my God, it's Puss in Boots. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, he's got, he's got, he's got a voice that, that can melt ice you know it's just so smooth oh it's Uh, undeniable when you hear his voice you know immediately who it is yeah 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 and he sort of he plays this billionaire tycoon and and we 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 i just thought it was funny to to explore um because it's sort of that weird world that billionaires live in i just find they sort of start wearing weird clothes and having leading weird lifestyles so uh yeah he had a lot of fun like he chewed up the scenery on that one now, this is also uh, reuniting for a lot of cinephiles out there from Desperado and El Mariachi having, uh, having Selma back with Antonio Banderas. Can you talk to me about just the magic that they have on the screen together? And by the way, I love in the flashbacks, that ponytail. Like you brought back the ponytail and I love it. Yeah, we pulled a reference from um, Desperado, that's for sure. Oh, look, those two, they've, they've worked together so often. So, right. I mean, just having them on set when they're together, they're, you know, I don't know, like, like there was just Selma brings so much energy to set, and so does Antonio. Like the two of them, they really are sort of these big personalities. Uh, and I remember, like, there was one moment on set where, you know, I, was, I think I was filming with Ryan, but my monitor for some reason had turned into like a party scene. Right. Um, and there's like, and people are dancing around my monitor, and there's there's Mexican music playing, and 
you know, they've got, they were doing a, you know, Spanish music was playing. They were doing the, the salsa together. And I'm like, what is this? I was like, guys, I got a movie to make. Move. <laughs> It's amazing. Now, uh, we also get a glimpse of why bodyguarding is so important to Michael. And we get to see, uh, we get introduced to his father, Senior, the greatest bodyguard ever, played by the amazing Morgan Freeman. Can you talk to me? Oh, that's a spoiler, I'm sure, right? Is that a little bit of a spoiler? I'll make sure that that, that, that part doesn't come out until yeah. after the film drops. Yeah. Um, but can you talk to me about how Senior views his son and vice versa? Uh, well, to me, I wanted to explore with Bryce is like, well, where ha has these validation issues stemmed from? Um, and there, there ha had to be a wound somewhere. And it, and it, it can certainly stem from a disapproving father figure, sure. hence his relationship with Sam in the first one. So that felt to me like an organic sort of way to move forward and to, to then start developing like, oh, okay, well, where is this wound coming from? And it's if it's validation he's seeking, it means he doesn't feel worthy whatever he does in the world of bodyguarding it's never quite enough sure, um, sure. so to me it was a lot of like those relationships you have with some certain you know like famous sports people who have an overbearing sort of um uh parental figure around them um so and then that, then it was really fun to just explore the world of bodyguarding we did a lot of research like ryan and i found I mean, we found all these these this like Instagram accounts of executive protection agents, and they really are. They're like living, breathing Michael Bryce's. You know, it's all right. about the, the 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 jets and the cars and the watches and the suits and the because it's like they, these guys just follow. You know, they're obviously protecting billionaires half the time. Um, so it's just a really weird, intriguing world uh, that actually is legitimate industry. So uh, we we just had a lot of fun playing around with that, and, and for me, it was. Well, well, okay, well, they probably have bodyguarding conventions and there's sure. probably bodyguarding awards. And and certainly Ryan Reynolds would love to win some of those awards with his validation issues. So let's let's send him to an award ceremony. I love uh, it. You know, it's just fun. Now, sidebar for a second. We got to talk about Frank Grillo. Uh, he is great in this movie. I yeah. love seeing Frank Grillo in this movie. Have you already started? Because I want to see him added to this trio. I think it would be so much fun and i love that he has like in his phone like triple a dickhead for ryan reynolds in there <laughs> it's amazing now talk to me about frank grillo a little bit in this role because he's just he's just so much fun in this role. Oh, he's great i love frank i've actually known frank we've been mates for years like we, we talked about doing a project years ago and we were both living in venice beach at the time and and we that project didn't eventuate but we ended up just hanging out and uh he's, he's a really as much as he plays a big tough guy he's a, the, one of the softest you know, he's a big softy. All, all the tough guys are. They're all, it's all front. Uh, no, he's great. And he's great in the film. And, and you know, we thought it would be fun if, if, if it's like a cranky Boston guy that just wants to get the hell out of Europe. Like, he just wants to complete this mission so he can go home. Um, and then he's stuck with Sam, Ryan and Selma. And so that sort of dynamic. But we, you know, I said to, to Frank, why the reason I cast him in the film is because I wanted him to be the complete opposite of Ryan Reynolds' character. Right because it's like, wow, you know, you've got Frank playing Bobby O'Neill, this hardened, you know, big, tough, alpha male cop, you know, really sort of overtly masculine. And then you've got Ryan, who's the soft, timid bodyguard that's trying to weasel his way out of everything. Um, so that's why we had to have a scene where Ryan punches, um, sorry, where Frank punches Ryan in the face. And he <laughs> did. I love that. I love that scene. Um, now, last question I have for you is uh, usually, or not usually, but uh, Michael usually calls himself uh, in, in, in the future and gives himself yeah. messages. Yeah. What would you as Patrick tell yourself from this movie uh, if you were doing the third uh, installment of this franchise? What would you call yourself and tell yourself about this movie from the experience? I would call myself and say, Patrick, make sure the actors commit to a certain amount of days so you don't lose your hair trying to juggle 15 schedules with actors that keep disappearing because they're off shooting that this is a problem shooting with movie stars it's like this every time i always vow like i'm like oh no i'm not doing that again not, and it always ends up this way because the problem is they're all working actors you right. know so that and everyone's got you know like just trying to it's a miracle any movie gets made to be honest right. but the hardest part of the process in all of this it's literally it's taking all these actors and trying to it's like a game of tetris you're trying to stick their schedules together for a window and you go oh my lord we've got a window where i've got morgan ryan sam and selma on stage and we've got this window let's quick we have to shoot that 
you know, because people actors are popping in and popping out. So yeah, that's, that would, that would be the biggest thing I'd call my future self about. I can only imagine because you're stacked with talent in this movie, like from, from, yeah. from the beginning of the film to the end of the film, you're just stacked with talent. So I can only imagine how hard that juggling process is, but Patrick, thank you so much for your time. I absolutely enjoyed the movie. It is so much fun. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Take care. It.